G'day yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Friday, December the 17th, 2021 and this is video number 134. So how are you all doing? I hope you're doing well and gearing up for all of your festivities over the holidays, whichever holidays you celebrate. Here in this household we celebrate Christmas, so our place is all decorated, the trees up, the lights are sparkling, making it really cozy and exciting for us to celebrate over Christmas. And we will be visiting friends and family, so we're really looking forward to that. In this video, I'm going to be talking about some works in progress, uh, some finished items, also an acquisition where I purchased from a new to me store up here in Canada, and I want to show you what I got in my purchase. Uh, also, I am going to be catching you up on my life updates here in the small community that me and my husband Chad has moved into. So uh, let's begin the podcast, shall we? And start by saying what I'm wearing. This is a knitted shawl, my first one that I did of a Stephen West pattern, and it's called the Boneyard Shawl. Now, I'm not too sure whether it's a free or paid for pattern. I'll link where I found it down below. And as with everything, I will be linking down below any mention of a podcaster or a tutorial that I followed or a website that I referred to. Now, they're not affiliated links at all. They're just ease of access and just a word of advice if you're using them, especially for the paid for patterns that you shop around because these um, pricings may change or may be different for different uh, selling points as well, wherever you find your patterns from. So I would suggest always looking around when you're shopping for patterns. Uh, and these are just suggestions that where I found my patterns from. Yeah, so let's kick off the podcast by talking about finished objects. Now, the first finished work that I've got to talk about, it was half done in a previous podcast, is this shawlette here. I did complete it and I'll just step back so you can have a look at it. It's a crocheted shawlette and I followed a foundational tutorial, which I'll link down below from our Kerry Penny over at the Happy Crafty Homemaker. Hi, Kerry Penny. I absolutely loved learning so much about the half circle eyelet shawl and Kerry Penny shows in her tutorial an eight wedge kind of foundation, but you can grow on it. She was saying that you could uh, mix it up or choose a different um, structure web, uh, web wedge count. So what I had done was I started off with the eight as she uh, shows in her video. And then I did some embellishments, row probably 12, 13, and I changed it then to a six wedge structure and I continued on embellishments. And I think I was up to this light, this lightish color row here in the last podcast. So I just wrapped up the, finished the ball and I did another eight or nine uh, rows. And I had enough just to do a nice kind of chunky double, it's a half double crochet through the back loop just to give it a nice kind of like firmer uh, border, like almost like an I-cord bind off, talking knitting terms here. So yeah, it g gave it a little bit of weight around the edges. So I really enjoyed that. Now what I used was a line brand yarn called Shawl in a Ball. I'm sure we've all heard of it. And the colorway was called Soothing Blue. And that was the whole entire ball. I just went until I finished. I might've had like about this much left. I played yarn chicken. And I used my Furls Odyssey, which was generously gifted to me by Emmy Phillips. Hi, Emmy. And it was a five millimeter uh, crochet hook. Really enjoyed using that. So that was item one. The next finished thing that I have to share with you is this cute crocheted amigurumi bunny. So cute. Now I did the, the head part a few weeks back and I wanted to do a bunny. So I learned some how to do some ears from following a tutorial. Now the tutorial is by Heather Kareen and I'll link the tutorial down below. It's called the Crochet Bunny Rabbit Amigurumi and it brought 30 
minutes into it, she talks about the ears because she does the body, the legs, the head, the ears, and then assembles it all together. Uh, but I just wanted to use the part of the tutorial for the ears. Now, look how adorable that is. So cute. And what I used was a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. So I've got nice tight stitches on worsted weight. And it was the James C. Brett marble, this uh, purplish beige color. And then this tan color down below is from a Kramer Yarns mystery box. So I don't know what that was, but the weight of all the yarn was four. I purchased from a fabric store these jean jacket buttons and they came with a back and a front side that you jam the material in between and then you hammer the two pieces together, securing them. And so they're nice and sturdy and I just used the Sharpie for the eyes. So yeah, I really enjoyed making uh, him up. So yeah, he will probably go on our tree even though he <laughs> is an Easter bunny. But um, yeah, I think he's super, super cute. So I'll just put him up here. There we go. Next up is a completed beanie. It's a knit beanie. And I was practicing a stitch that I learned from Tin Can Knits website. Now they have a few little snippet videos of instructional how to do's. And I was learning a one by one ribbing with a slip stitch in a second color. So I was passing my slip stitch uh, behind, uh, sorry, yes, behind the, the, the work. And um, I will show you what it looks like inside out. So that would be doing the slip stitch, passing the yarn in front. Uh, so there are two ways that you can build up this fabric, either pass the slip stitch in front or behind. And I just worked it in the round. I used a 4.5 millimeter uh, set of knitting needles in a 16 inch uh, circular. And yeah, the two yarns that I used, the tannish speckly yarn here is Lime Brands Comfy Cotton in the colorway Driftwood. And the bluish color is from Brown Sheep Company. And that yarn collection is called Serendipity Tweed. Uh, and it is in the colorway Raindrop. I added a pom-pom as well. Absolutely cute little ice blue pom-pom there. And I'll just show you what it looks like on the inside. So when you're doing that stitch, the one by one ribbing with the slip stitch, this is what it looks like when you pass the stitch in the front of the, of the fabric. So you get these little stripes, striping effect that's going on with uh, the past, with uh, passing the yarn across. And I added a button there for the pom-pom. So you can remove the pom-pom when you're washing the hat so you don't ruin the pom-pom. And this is it where it's the one by one ribbing and you're passing the slip stitch to the back. Absolutely enjoyed working and learning this stitch. So I've got an idea of doing a sweater in this stitch using these two yarns. And I prefer having the dominant blue color rather than the dominant uh, speckly yarn here in the Lion brand. So yeah, I'll be doing the sweater in that kind of texture here. So a good way of actually practicing what a fabric will look like before starting and embarking on a, a larger project is to do a hat or a swatch. And I've just got to close that, got a message. So that is all of the finished objects. Now moving on to works in progress. The first one I have here is a crocheted piece. And this is teaching me so much. I'm just gonna make sure that it's the right way. It is a crocheted shawl. Now I have, uh, I have some uh, footage of this cause it's getting a little bit too big to showcase in my screen, but I have some photographs of it where I was starting it and uh, kind of have worked on it since. So I'll insert them here and then I'll talk about the piece.
a little bit of a backstory on how I found this pattern online has to be explored as well because <laughs> I still don't know what this pattern is called to be honest. But uh, backtracking to one of my favourite YouTubers, Heather the Crocheted Witch. Hi Heather! Uh, I've been watching her for a very long time and she has the most amazing shawls patterns that she's found and created as well as blankets, as well as amigurumi. She's an all-rounder. I absolutely love her crocheted de uh, designs that she creates as well. Um, so I was admiring her shawl that she was making up called the Calypso shawl and I, I thought I'm going to google that and so I found where the shawl was but beside it it was this pattern as well and now I'm not really sure whether it's called the Calypso shawl because I purchased the pattern and I was like I opened it up and I read the title of the pattern and it says mystery shawl 2020. So it's not a mystery anymore. It's been published for a while and each of the sections have been published. So let me tell you a little bit about the designer. I'm looking down at my notes. It's a German name, I believe. So I do apologize ahead of time if I butcher any of the names. So it's called Morbin Design and it is attributing a person, Jasmine Rassinen, as the designer. So here we go. Again, one more time. Now this mystery shawl 2020 has 12 sections to it. And just as I'm learning the stitch and there's no time to get bored, uh, you're on to the next stitch. And I absolutely love that. So there are some uh, parts that are a little harder to learn than others, but the pattern has you covered with three ways. It has you covered with uh, the formula written out. It also has charts and it also has photographs. So if you're not fully understanding one of the ways of reading a pattern, there are other ways to also, you know, figure out the information. And I'll tell you a little bit about where I found that of immense value because normally I do read the formula, but I can read charts as well. So the first section here or part one is a front post, back post, kind of ribbing texture on a granny square. The second section or second part is eyelets. The third section is this wonderful lace work, which I'm calling the starfish because it reminds me of starfish. And then the fourth section is eyelets again. The fifth section here was where I kind of made uh, my biggest learn and also a couple of mistakes. It was, uh, I did the first two rows to the formula, written formula, and it, they were fine. Then I went to try and figure out uh, using the chart. And that's where I went and did something wrong because I was alternating the posts <laughs> as I was turning the work. I wasn't um, reading them as now uh, because I've turned the work, it's different. <laughs> I was um, actually making a woven style kind of technique with my front post, back post instead of a rippling rib technique. Now, so I had to rip back at this point and that's when I discovered the yarn that I was using. The Queensland collection was not very uh, good with ripping back, but uh, I did it and I redid it to the written pattern part of the, of the, of the shawl. And then now in this sixth part where I'm in, it's looking like it's starting to form these flower motifs and I'm absolutely enjoying it. So awesome, awesome, awesome. I love it so much. And each of the sections or the parts in the pattern are designated names. So I've got a feeling that Morbin is, uh, has designed many, many different or has copyright of many different patterns. And I think this might be a sampler shawl of all the many different patterns that Morbin Design has copyright to and you get a bit of a taste of all the different shawls because each part is given a name. The hook that I'm using is a Susan Bates hook, a US 7 or a 5mm hook and I love this hook. Love that there's a comfortable bamboo handle on it, it's not cold, it's warm to touch and the uh, point of it is quite a pointy hook, which allows me to see 
uh, and pierce through exactly the stitch that I need or part of the stitch that I need for the, the next stitch. And this was generously gifted to me by a fiber friend who would like to remain anonymous. So anonymous, you know who you are. Thank you so much for this lovely hook. Let's talk about the yarns that I used for that mystery shawl 2020. As I mentioned, I used a Queensland yarn and it's called their cassowary collection. I absolutely love and hate this yarn. I absolutely love the finished item that the fabric made, is made with this. It's squishy and bouncy and the sheen on it is just a delicious kind of semi sheen, like a pearl essence. And the colorway is called avocado. It is classified a one weight, super fine or a fingering weight yarn. Absolutely soft enough to wear around your neck or delicate parts of your body. I love, I love it. It's super soft for the amount of wool that's in here. So it's 70% wool and 30% nylon. And in each cake, you get 380 yards or 347 meters. Now the pattern, the mystery 2020 shawl pattern calls for 2000 yards. So I only had two of these cakes. So I knew I had to complement it with another type of yarn to make the full 12 sections. So what I added in to the yarn was this yarn here from Kartopu which I believe is a hobium yarn. I got this a while back, maybe a year and a half ago, one of my first orders from hobium, and it's called Angora Natural. Now this is also classified as a fingering weight yarn, and I have enough of this color to supplement the missing yardage for that shawl. And they do relate to one another. They are on the same kind of like uh, wheel, color wheel section. And I think that they work up very nicely and a nice way of landing and resting your eye on a flat color after having a little bit of um, variegation in this one here. So what can I tell you about this yarn here? In the ball, you get 100 grams, which gives you 530 meters. And I have like three of these balls. So I have plenty to get me through uh, and add into the shawl to finish the project. So yeah, I'm really enjoying it. I think it's a, a great uh, purchase and great way of learning new stitches and having a bit of fun as well as a nice product at the end. So absolutely like that. Thank you so much, Heather, for giving me the inspiration as well for looking for that pattern. Next up is a work in progress and it's a knitted cow. Now I'm not working to any particular pattern, but I am pulling my resources of color work from a stitch dictionary and something that has been swimming around in my brain for a while to do some checkering effects with fingering weight yarn. So here it is here. As you can tell, I'm kind of like um, more than halfway through the cow and I set up a number of stitches. I chose 184 stitches divided by four and each of the quadrants I chose to do something a little different while well, two of them are the same. Uh, but yeah, I am using 3.25 millimeter circulars and the circumference, I'm oh, sorry, the length of the needle or the circular is 22 inches. And then my chagu, I love my chagu. So what I've done in the quadrants is a checkering effect using two weight, uh, two different styles of yarn. One is in a blue and a dark gray. And the second one is more of the vibrant light colors of purple, orange, and a little bit of this uh, off white kind of lilac -y color. So yeah, uh, what can I tell you about it? Two of the quadrant, quadrants are a four stitch by four row checker effect. And two of the quadrants are in this kind of like feral color work. I don't know whether it's stranded or whether it's called a uh, flea stitch, but they're in diamond formation. And I'm using the lighter color here as the dominant color in that pattern. 
And then I switch it up on this quadrant here and I'm using the darker colour as the dominant colour just to give an idea of what the two, the same pattern looks like using the opposing uh, different colourways. So yeah, it's turning out really nice. And what I'm planning to do, because it is curling up at the end because the colour work is quite close to the edge, I am going to be knitting up with the grey and blue yarn the encasing or the interior and then seaming it together so that this will be kind of like forced or or pulled back in on itself and we won't get that ripple at all. So yeah and with blocking as well and laying flat to dry I think uh, it will iron out that curl at the end. And with all colour work we all have to see what the floats look like. I don't know why that is the case, but it's almost like when you're uh, giving a measurement of comparison between a yarn ball, you, you know, lots of podcasters put it up against their head. It's just like one of the things we do. So here we go. The floats are inside that look like this. And I did have to twist my yarn around uh, certain areas where it went longer than four stitches. So really nice learns there for me. And I like the fabric it's making. So I don't have one of the colorway labels, but I do recall what it was. It's called Lilac Lust of the Colorway, and it's from Yarn Bee. And it's the authentic hand-dyed yarn in the colorway Lilac Luster. The second one I do have the ball band to show you. It is Shasha Meyer's Re Regia yarn. And the colorway is called City Street Colors. Really nice colors there. That's what's going to be used for the interior on its own. And then I'll seam it up and then it will sort of lay flat. That's the hope anyway. <laughs> That's all the topics that I've got to talk about on my makes for this episode. But I do want to touch base on a yarn company new to me up here in Canada. Now, I think I got wind of this from Instagram. I have a lot of people that I have subscribed to and I follow. And one of the ones is this new, new to me store. They were having a sale. So I jumped in to have a look at their website and it is called True North Yarn Company. I'm reading my notes down here. I'm so sorry. And so I bought a small, a small purchase from them and I got 15% off on their sale that they had. And what I got was this beauty here. Really, really super soft. I love the colors and it's got citrusy yellows, citrusy greens. Um, it goes almost into a jade tealish color and it's wonderful. It's called Merino Sock. So it's a fingering weight yarn. That's the label there. And it ha has a note here that it's hand dyed and it's a combination yarn, 75% extra fine Superwash Merino and 25 Nylon. You get 400 meters in this 100 gram hank. Uh, they're suggesting needle size of 2.25 to 3.25 millimeters. And the washing instructions is that you can wash on gentle and warm, and then you lay flat to dry. The color here is 20. It looks like there, it might be a two or a zero seven. So two zero two seven or two zero zero seven. It looks like they've made a bit of a, a boo-boo on the typing there. But yeah, this was uh, going for on the website for $20 and I got the 15% off. So I got $3 off of this. So it was 17 Canadian dollars, absolutely soft. No undergarments required for this one. The other things that I got, I've been looking at for a long time. And these are the two colors that uh, I've gravitated to. It's the Drops Brushed Alpaca Silk. And I got it in Rust and Curry. I have been looking to do um, 
two yarns held together one strand of this and one strand of a similar or opposing color in a fingering weight and then knitting up something like a hat to see how it looks so i love those colors i'll tell you a little bit about the yarn so it is the collection called unicolor and it is from drops i think i mentioned they are suggesting a five millimeter or us eight needle or hook size and the weight is 25 grams in that you get 140 meters or 153 yards the content is 70 percent alpaca and 23 percent silk it's very very soft again there's no itchy factor to this at all um, i think that will add an extra dimension and texture to your work holding it together with something else so again that is curry and this is rust little donuts there and each of those were worth seven sorry six dollars and 95 cents uh before the 15 percent discount i also wanted to get some double pointed needles and i got them in the stainless steel chagu I needed to get some that were quite small because I have some soft tubes that I need to do heels, toes. And I think my smallest uh, double pointed needles were or are 3.25 bamboos. And it does create a fabric that's a slightly loose attention to the soft tubes. So I went down a needle size and I purchased the two millimeter stainless steel from Chagu and that was $13.50. So I really enjoyed shopping with them. I thought the website was easy to navigate. Uh, they had easy to fill in like uh, profile and also your purchases were quite easy to, um, to manage, uh, how to ship it to you and stuff like that. So that was lovely. Uh, the shipping fee was really cheap. I think that they only charged me, I think $5. For the shipping and uh yeah it got to me super quick it's been with me for about a week and i did make this order november 25th so that is took about maybe 10 days to to get here um and with that i think that's all of the yarny goodness now if you want to move on to your important things throughout the day and you don't want to stick around to hear about what's been going on here in our little community my husband chad and i have moved into then thank you for coming i appreciate the time that you spent with me there are so many youtubers out there doing vlogmas and this will be my little entry into vlogmas because i do have some clips to talk about that are more to do with the festive season so thank you for joining and if you want to continue watching please do so what have me and my husband been up to in our new to us community we've just moved into we've been exploring more hikes and trails and we found a couple along two, uh, two different rivers uh, which we have clips of i'll talk to you about the first one this ridge we've walked up on was I'm going to say maybe 30, 50 feet above the river curve and the hike went on for 10 minutes of walking and this river was raging because of all the tributaries coming in and all of the rain that we've been having. So it's this milky green colour. I was quite stunned about how much force was behind all of the moving water and we love the hike and the second river that we found that we found a hike on was called nymph falls and we walked out onto a ledge uh that went into the middle of the falls you could get a sense of feeling like part of what it would be in amongst the ra raging waters and still being quite safe on a on a ridge that was high up so that was quite fantastic as well we really enjoyed that uh, we found a little bench that was alongside the water that was a memory bench of uh, commemorating someone's life 
and in that little hut there were a couple of surprises and I if I do have a clip I will show it to you and just to get, give a sense of how much the water sounded rushing by uh, I'll leave the volume on for one of the clips so that you can hear just the raging water so if you're listening to headphones just be aware that the sound might go up incredibly loud uh, <laughs> So uh, when I let you know that the clips are coming on, just so that you know to turn the volume down. So I will place the video clips here of the walks now. And um, yeah, you'll hear the raging waters. We're down by the river at Nymphs Falls. Someone has already come here to pay homage on the seat of memory with a can of booze. And if I look up here, there's a little doobie up there with a uh, lighter. It's like for the homies. Okay. The other thing that we have been doing around our neighborhood has been a little bit influenced by another YouTuber. I've been watching her Vlogmas and again, the name Heather from Crochet Witch comes up because I absolutely love her Vlogmas. She's been going on nightly visits to show off uh, lights around uh, her neighborhood, light, lit up houses and decorated gardens with all their displays and ornaments. And I thought, I wonder where they are here around town. So uh, hubby and I went into the car. We left our neighborhood because we have like a neighborhood which is more uh, working class. So the, the, we have, the houses are kind of decorated outside, but not in a, a full blown fantastical way they're they're just uh, you know humble and sweet and we went to a certain part where we found the treasure trove street of like light, lit up houses and uh, I was astounded because I've never seen so many lights on a street before outside of the houses so I just am floored on how much their hydro or electrical bill will be but <laughs> Here's what we found, and I want to insert some of the clips of some of the houses that we f we found. Thank you, Heather, for giving us the inspiration to go and look for these lit up houses. Now, not only did we find that magical place, but we were visited by a couple of trucks all lit up. In, the, in our neighborhood, we have working trucks that thought, what a great way to get all the festivities going and do something for the children. So it was right around about, say, dinner time, six o'clock in the evening when uh, we were prepping for dinner and I was upstairs. I think I might've been doing my last podcast and all of a sudden I heard all this loud music and tooting of a horn and, and Chad was in the kitchen saying like, oh my goodness, there's like lit up trucks. So I raced outside with my camera and I met my neighbor and <laughs> he was running out as well. And all these kids were on the sidewalk looking to see what all the commotion was about. So there were these three trucks that were lit up and really building up the spirit of Christmas in this small community and the area where we live. So I've got a film clip of that as well to share with you.
that brings me up to talk about what me and my hubby Chad have been watching on TV as TV series or movies. Now, because it's Christmas, we've been drinking eggnog or having a bit of rum at night, watching the lights on the Christmas tree, and then watching some Christmas story or inspired movies. And the ones that we have to mention this time round, now they're all light of heart, you know, not a, a compelling storyline, but just something nice to, you know, warm your soul and the fuzzy edges around like, you know, Christmas. Uh, so one of them was Single All The Way. Now I'm not sure whether it's home Hallmark movie, but it features actors, you know, talking about a storyline about love and how love can be right under your nose and you don't expect it until, you know, people have the courage enough to face their fears or, you know, come out to each other in a way that is honest, um, that, you know, these two characters were feeling the same way in the end. So really cute story. The second one was Christmas Chronicles 1 and 2. So we preferred Christmas Chronicle 1. And I'm mentioning this one because you got to look out for the knitted patterns in all of the hats and beanies and scarves and uh, jumpers that all of these characters wear. I was incredibly blown away by all of the Fair Isle and all of the colour work and all of the stitches. So, um, yes, it stars Kirk Russell and the second one, or the small area of the last five minutes, also stars Goldie Horn, and the second one has more of uh, Kirk Russell and Goldie Horn in the movie together. But um, it talks about the North Pole, talks about elves, and the elves are so cute. They have their own language, which is adorable. Uh, so yes, very lighthearted. Then um, I had some other movies here, which I'll leave for another time because they're not really Christmassy, but um, I do have them in my book to, to mention in the next in the next episode. But that catches you up on everything on what we've been doing. I have made a couple of orders which have gotten lost and we're in the recovery phase of like where things are. So unfortunately, I did have some more Black Friday sales to talk about, but they have not arrived. Um, we are looking at figuring out where in Canada Post they were missed or have been held up. It was a Hobie order. So they not not Hobie's fault whatsoever. And it came from Denmark within three days, it made it its way into Montreal, into Canada Post. And uh, the tracking says that it's in my province, but it hasn't, hasn't moved for about two weeks. So I'm um, anxious to find out what we can do to rectify it. The problem I've let Hobie know, and I've let Canada Post know, and they're saying that the weather that we had last two weeks ago, there was lots of rain and uh, some roads were damaged. Um, but uh, post has been coming through regularly, like our um, mail has come from other parts of the world fine. It's for some reason, the package has not moved from Richmond, which is the uh, dispatch area for the last two weeks. And with that, I think that catches you up on everything. I just want to reiterate again to all of my fibre friends and anyone who's watching to have a great and safe holiday season, uh, whatever holiday you're celebrating. Um, make sure that you're joyful and positive and spreading love to other people and being kind. That's the best gift that anyone could uh, receive. So if we're all on the same playing field uh, of kindness, uh, it would be a wonderful, wonderful time to rejoice and celebrate. So thank you so much for sticking out this far with me and I'll see you in the next podcast. Bye for now.